So I'm going to be uh, securing my floor using uh, these holes on the bottom. They're spaced about, I don't know, every 12 inches or so. And you can see I put a rib nut in here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that now. I, I think it's pretty, you know, common sense. It's called a rib nut. And I'm using uh, two 10, 10 24 using a guy this big and uh, essentially what we do is get your roof nut Jones I don't know what this is called get your roof nut Jones you thread your roof nut on and then you stick it in a hole just like that and you start squeezing until, it, until it's happy and then if you, uh, you'll feel it tighten up, you can back it out a little, or back it in. Keep squeezing until it's, it's, it's done. You'll, you'll know when it's done. So that's in. And then you back it out using this, this knob here. So you unthread it. Let's get your rib nut tightener out. Come on, come on, little baby. Boom. Now you got a place to screw stuff in. Good point now. You can see I've laid out the subfloor. Uh, lumber members. And um, on the wall over here, you can see they're just about right. I relieved, I did some relieves for the angle brackets. On the sides, they're going to screw in there, um, and then, uh, of course, I uh, put in the shower tray up in the front. It'll be cut down, of course, but uh, I think it's uh, you can you can at least see how the subfloor is starting to shape up. All right, I painted the boards. This is just a little paper residue, which doesn't matter. Uh, but the, all the boards are painted. Uh, which seals seals them up. Moisture shouldn't be a problem anymore. Used uh, L brackets on the side to tie them into those rib nuts that we inserted. And then uh, I'm using one inch pink. Uh, I don't remember what you call this stuff, but it's a uh, pink insulation. The boards are one and a half inches thick. So. Um, the pink board, the pink pink foam board is one inch thick, and I have on top of that, it's got a better R value, and I've used it under my floor before, and it, it did fine. Um, I have a half inch thick piece of uh, polyiso, I think that's what that's called, and um, then I'm going to put a uh, quarter inch board over the top of that, screw it all down, and I'll show you that once I have it done. All finished. So we have all the sections filled in, except for in the very front, right there, but uh, we have something planned for that, so I'm just going to fit in there. And then uh, these guys here, they don't have any silver, but um, that's where our water tank is going to go, and the idea would be that we heat up our water tank at night, or during the day, and then blow, uh, use like a computer fan to uh, blow air across there, and uh, warm up the air, and heat the inside of the van. For the shower pan, uh, you can find this large uh, tray on Granger, Granger's website, I ordered it online, and then I cut it uh, to an inch and a half depth on the uh, on my table saw, just set it for an inch and a half, and um, now this, this should be the right depth, and 
I can go ahead and kind of uh, final fit the width and dimensions into the floor, which is currently filled with tools. The floor is in. I have all of the uh, decking cut now. It's over there and painted. I'll show you that when I put it in. Um, but before I put the decking down, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to. This is a 10 mil uh, tarp, and I'm going to double it up. It's a 20 by 16. I bought it from Home Depot, and uh, what I found in the last build was any moisture that can make it to the van um, floor will cause cancer, basically. Even if it's, you know, got good paint, everything's fine. Even a, like a teaspoon of water, if it even makes it down there, it starts to rust a little hole. So I'm putting this in as a, a little bit of a moisture barrier. And... Um, I don't think that, uh, I think this is more going to cause uh, more good than not good. I know some people say that um, uh, trapping moisture is uh, almost as bad as letting moisture through. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm doing this uh, in response to what I found when I tore up the old floor. So show you when it's all rolled out. Alright, so we got the uh, tarp laid out. Starting to do some finer cuts around the edges, trying to bring it up about an inch past the uh, past the past the decking. And um, I cut this wheel well so that uh, it was just a couple inches coming up the wheel well. Made it a lot easier to lay the plastic. Um, this one, I'm going to keep it completely covered because I'm going to have my water pump over there and some other um, water things, which may leak, so I wanted to get kind of full coverage. And then uh, put this decking down, and I think this is going to go fast, so I, I thought I'd get like midstream what's up. All right, time for... For the shower pan, I uh, popped a hole in, uh, in the location that it needs to go so that it'll drain down into the gray tank. You can see I got a hole in the floor already, and right below it, straight drop is a uh, gray tank. Uh, so the plan is I'm going to use a hot air uh, gun. I think, you know, it doesn't have to be this SMD removal tool, um, but uh, you can use any any hot air gun. I'm going to heat up that area, then I'm going to use this uh, Craig jig to squish it all down when it's hot. Use this uh, wood piece as a backer panel. We'll see how it goes. I'm hopeful. And it's last words. I used the jigsaw to cut a slot on the top of that give it some relief so that uh, hopefully as I melt it, it will push down and push together. Um, then secondly, I increased my aperture on the heat gun. Bigger. So that will allow me to put more heat on there, hopefully melt it a little more evenly. Let's see how it goes. So in addition to um, uh, all of that other stuff, I put a backer plate just underneath uh, to give this thing a little uh, plenty of something to extra to push on. And I think we're almost up to temp here. I'm doing a 482, and I can see the plastic is melting. Um, have the air turned up pretty hard. A little more air. Yeah, you can see it's starting to slump.
It's like a freaking mess, but uh, I think I can save it. I'm glad I put that board on as a backer. You can see it started slumping because the edges are getting hotter because there's less heat transfer. Let's see if I can save it. Step number three. I have the lip that I um, sawed off, so I took a little piece out of this lip. I know it's uh, prop polyethylene ethylene or something like that. Um, I have these welding sticks, which I thought I could use, but I don't have uh, polyethylene. Uh, so anyway, I took, uh, took that little piece. I'm going to fill that in the, in the bottom. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a flat lip here. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weld this in, melt it in there nice. And then I'm going to take a piece of aluminum, once I have it pretty pretty much melted, I'm going to take a piece of aluminum as a heat sink. And then I'm going to flip the pan, do the other side, and this will keep this, so the piece of aluminum will keep the um, uh, plastic from sagging as I, as I melt it, and then should create a nice flat surface. So, uh, one more time, see how it works. is done. So it um, doesn't look too pretty, but um, I'm going to take and uh, sand this edge where the uh, actual lip of the drain goes. I'll sand it down so it's nice and smooth. And then, um, yeah, so that's all the same thickness. And then I just need to do one more. Also, uh, I have metal I have a piece of aluminum on the back side, holding the plastic up so it doesn't drip, dip. And then on this side, um, I used another angle bracket that I had and uh, kind of smoothed it out, pushed the plastic around, tried to flatten it out. I tried with the screwdriver, pointless. Side number two went pretty good. Um, I think uh, if I had to do it a third time, I could do it even better. You know, that's how things work. Um, 100 times, I probably did. This wouldn't look like dog shit. But um, that's how it is. No one's going to see it. So, all I really care about is uh, whether or not it passes a leak test. Let's kind of show you. Got this nasty old ring, but uh, essentially that's you know that's what I was going for. I need a flat surface. I'll probably still sickle flex this in um, instead of just using the gray stuff. The drain has been installed. I did a leak check on it. Um, looks tight. Uh, on the back side, I'll show you another thing that I'm doing. Is uh, you have your standard kind of connection, uh, plumbing connections that you'd have on the bottom of the bathtub. But then at the top, I have this thing that's called a HEP, HEPVO, H E P V O, waterless waste gate. And uh, essentially, if you look down in there, if you look it up online, it's probably easier to understand, but, but it has a a membrane in there that allows water to go one direction and uh, I did not have one of these on in our pre in my previous design and what I found was it, the gray tank even though it's just got water in it and you know some soap 
it still got um, smelly at times. And that smell would come up through the drain because it was a straight shot. And so I had to keep the drain covered when the shower wasn't in use. Um, I'm hoping that this will solve that. And uh, it will go down into the gray tank a little ways, but um, uh, I, I don't think it'll be a problem. I thought I'd go over uh, how I did this uh, gray tank. Pretty pretty easy. It's a, it's a two and a half inch hole going through the uh, bottom of the van. And then I followed that up with a two inch hole, but um, I used an aluminum pan underneath to hold the uh, gray tank. And then um, used all thread, as you can see, lock washer, lock nut. I have, um, in addition to that being a lock nut, I, uh, I use a uh, thread lock on it so it doesn't uh, come undone. And then I use a strap, and there's another one over here. So there's a total of four of these coming down. The other ones are underneath me. Um, so anyway, that's that's the gray tank setup, and uh, nothing to. You can see the shower pan in now. We have uh, got it flush everywhere. It's going to be huge, huge. I'm, I forgot to mention the uh, size of the shower pan on the Ranger. It's a 48 by 30. Um, actual dimensions are a little bit bigger. Tapers to the outside, but the base of it is like 48 by 31. So, next I'm going to lay this plastic down, put some decking on, get that all secured. I'll come back when I'm done with that. I believe the subfloor is complete. So I have all the um, plastic in. I'm going to trim this back edge um, with a piece of uh, uh, galvanized uh, tin probably, but that'll protect that edge from getting chewed up. Um, I need to get a bigger piece of that. Uh, so that's the garage. I ran the uh, plastic up the wheel well because uh, on that side it's going to be kind of, that's kind of the wet wall, and uh, the water pump and everything will be out above that wheel well. And if there's a leak, then I want it to kind of be contained by the plastic. Uh, stepping around to the side, you can see the showers in. Um, I kind of did a um, trim piece with that uh, galvanized uh, roof roof trim, and um, you can also see that um, I put in the floor, so there's enough gap where water can go down. Um, it should run to the drain and go out. Uh, in the uh, part back there where there is no board, that will have a cabinet over it. So the water will run under the cabinet and down the drain. And then um, I'm going to put um, fans underneath the uh, cabinet, on the underside of the cabinet, to kind of keep the air circulating and, and blowing until that area is dry each, each shower probably put it on a timer um, anyway uh, pretty happy with how it came out other th other things uh, so this the, all of this is going to get covered up with uh, carpet up to the edges and then I think I'll probably have a carpet that will cover that those boards um, that will make it flat and uh, probably a little more comfortable keep a little cooled out or heat and then uh, I'm planning on doing a trim piece, a nice long trim piece there. Uh, not ex exactly sure how I'm going to finish off this um, entry, but uh, it'll be brilliant. Okay. Um, yeah, so the floor's done. Any questions, comments? Leave them at the bottom.